So what we'll do is I've got some screens um, to show you, but I can also go on the live site. So at any point, if you want to ask a question or want me to show it to you in a bit more detail, then just um, put your hand up and then you can put your mic on and ask that specific question. So he seems to be transcribing everything I say. So <laughs> that's a bit strange. I've never seen that before. OK, so what I'm going to do, first of all, then is just show you how the Pathway Planner fits into a whole school approach to careers and where it fits in terms of the careers main site. So before we ever had the Pathway Planner, we had Career Pilot and Career Pilot is four zones you'll be familiar with. Everything happens from really the student zone um, and then we've got the reporting zone, the advisor zone and the parent zone that you've chosen to add on the Pathway Planner to your site. So you have to enable it for the students to see it in their career tools. You'll then be able to see all the data in the reporting zone. And obviously in the advisor zone, there's lots of lesson plans and materials you can use. So in terms of whole school approach, we see Career Pilot, the four zones, as being a kind of key tool that you can use from year seven right up to year 13. and in the site that are activities for every year group that enable them to become managers of their own careers, but also link with the decisions they're having to make in. So year nine might be about option choices. So if you're a careers leader, career pilot could be the center of what you're trying to do as part of your job. And to help you with that, we've got our three stage career process, which you might be familiar with. We've got activities for every year, as I mentioned, but also lots of resources to help you delivery like five week PSHE programs. So that as a careers leader, you'd be trying to engage these people in supporting um, your careers work. So there's lots of things for tutors. There's materials, PS PSAG staff could be delivering. Obviously, there's the parents zone. There's activities for subject teachers and everything is really leading towards that personal career guidance. Um, so the pathway planner really fits at that point. So the pathway plan is usually used in year 11 and 12. Um, some schools use it right at the end of year 10 and some schools will do it again with year 13. So you'll see that as we go through. So what I'm planning to do is kind of whiz through fairly quickly because you have seen some of these things before. But like I say, stick your hand up if you'd like me to stop and repeat something or show it to you on the live site. Just a little bit more about what we've got in Career Pilot. As I said, activities for every age group, and they're available as lessons. So about a 50 minute to an hour lesson. So there's one for every year group, as, as I said, they're progressive. And we've got different ones for the Pathway Planner for year 11 and year 12. Now, all those sessions are available now as recorded video lessons as well, which is somebody from my team delivering the session. So if it's a tutor or PSAG member of staff, they can literally put this on and then it will tell them when to stop and get the students to do particular activities. So it should make it a bit more easy to have consistency across the number of people delivering. Now, for the main um, presentations for all the different year groups, I haven't put them into the Pathway Planner yet. We've tried to map to the new career development framework so the presentations tell the students what we're going to be covering from that framework as part of that session. So we've got the five-week PSHE programmes. You could just pick a mix. You don't have to use them all, but you know they are there for you to know if you wanted to build up careers right from year seven, all the lesson plans and materials are there. We've got little fun activities you can do in two to time that don't require a computer. We've got activities for subject teachers so they can link their subject to careers. And we've got things like our hot job posters that um, you can put up in the classrooms and they're available as little so social media packages as well. So there's lots of things that are available in our advisor zone that will help delivery right from year seven upwards including something like the Getting Started with Career Pilot uh, guide that's got activities for every age group and maps to all our resources. I don't know if you've seen that. That's on the advisor zone in the Career Leader portal. OK, so this is Career Pilot. I'm sure you know it, so we're not going to go through any detail. But one thing you need to remember is to get students to register if they've never registered before and sign in if they've done it before. And if they've forgotten their password, when they go to sign in, they can click on Forgotten Password. That will then give them access to career tools and this is where the pathway planner is going to appear. And then all that data is available for them to see, but also is creating reports for you in the reporting zone. OK, and the advisor zone with all those lesson plans is right at the top. 
of the home page and the parent zone is there as well. And I'm just going to mention our three stage process that fits very much with the pathway planner presentations and um, start with you with his activities to help students know more about themselves, explore their options. They can do that in a range of ways and then they can plan their next steps. Now, we have got a few new things on Career Palette. I don't know if you've had a chance to look this year. We've got a new entry point, which is start with what's important to you, your values. So this is where a student can choose something like, you know, they're passionate about the environment and get ideas of jobs and things they can do to use that passion in order to find um, some a career of the, for, that might suit them in the future. We've also got in the jobs now for each of our, I think it's 800 and something job profiles, there's now a, a link to live vacancies. So that provides even more labour market information, gets me too. Um, so uh, students get more, more information, even if they're young and they're not about to apply for a job, it'll give them a flavour of what jobs look like. So you might want to have a little look at that. That might be useful when you're preparing for work experience, for example. OK, so just quickly running through one thing the students need to know um, whether they're using CareerPal or the Pathway Planner, whenever they're in the site, they can be tagging the things they're interested in. So the top right of just about every page in Career Palette, they can add. So this is a job animal care worker. And when they add it, it'll appear in my job sectors, but also in their main report. But they can always go back and change things or get rid of it if they don't do that anymore. So in terms of the report, students can see their full report here. It can be quite detailed if they've done the career tools. And even before they had the Pathway Planner, we always, as advisors, use this data. Um, so we found out about the students before we did our guidance session. And after the session, we always recorded our report straight onto the system so they're visible to the student and any other teacher that's got access to their record. Students can also look at a dashboard. So that's a summary view and the pathway planner will show on there as well. And that could be printed off, so it's just less pages than the main report. Useful for parents evening, maybe a little summary. Um, okay, so this is the pathway planner model. I'll, I know you've seen all this before, so we'll go through fairly quickly. So it's all about start preparing the students for guidance and completing the pathway planner. So there's a session which we've designed, you can use it or use something of your own, one for year 11, which you could do in your, use in year 10 as well, and one for year 12. So this session is going to give them a chance to know more about their options. And then right at the end, we're going to ask them which they're interested in. They'll complete the pathway planner. They will complete a quiz and they will get a red, amber, green score to show how ready they are for that pathway. Then you can use all that data so you can start to allocate guidance at three different levels. Obviously, you could then do the guidance. You can use careers pilots part guidance if you're a guidance advisor, um, but you can record then a report straight onto career pilot. And the model is based on somebody following up probably about four weeks after the guidance. It could be a tutor, head of six, takes literally five minutes. There are three questions. And what's wrapped around this model is having at least one lunchtime a week, doesn't have to be a lunchtime, of drop in. So this drop-in is a great mop-up for any students who are still worried after you've offered that initial guidance. And this is where the tutors can ask if they could, you know, refer them and ask if they could have a little drop-in session as well. So it sort of real wraps around and makes sure students get the guidance they need. I sent this out some time ago. If you need another copy, let me know. But it is on the um, Pathway Planner resources page, which I'll show you a bit later. So this is just showing you at the top the kind of things you need to put in place for the Pathway Plan to work. So you need to get the students registered. You need to set them up in groups. You need to think about when you're doing this pre-guidance option cho choice session. You need to think about what levels of guidance you're going to provide if they're green, amber, red need to train the tutors and then you think about when the tutors are going to follow up you can sort of drag and drop these into this little timetable of terms below okay so you'll be thinking about how long are they going to get and what alternative guidance you can offer i would really recommend the dropping because it's a great way to mop things up you might also be thinking about how you're going to evaluate the impact of these different levels of guidance OK, so that was a quick run through the context, if you like. Um, so we're going to go on now to 
what you need to do before the students are able to see the pathway planner. So number one, you probably know this, but students have to register themselves. You don't send us a big list of students. And the reason they register themselves is because we allow them to have their account until they're 21. So they might not be with you by then. So this is their ongoing account. So that's why they register and they can take their account to different places. It usually takes you about 15 minutes to get them registered. If you've got 30 minutes, they could register and have a little explore around the site. But before you set them up for the pathway planner, they have to be registered on career pilot, otherwise they're not in the system. When they're in the system, you can set them up in the pathway planner group and give them access. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. It has to be a separate occasion from running your um, session with students. So the way you would do that, you get your students in, you'd set up your staff, the teachers, your guidance advisors, whoever needs to see those students' reports. Uh, you'd be thinking about what groups you're going to set your students up in, like tutor groups is the common one, but it could be vertical, that gives you a lot more groups you have to set up. But once you've done it once, that should be fine then. And then you're going to put it all together. So you put my students in, my staff in, my group structure, make the pathway plan available, and then everybody can see what they need to see. So I'm just going to kind of go through that a little bit just to remind you. So number one is the students just register here or sign in if they've already got an account. So do ask them, have you registered on CareerPal before? Because if they have, you just want them to get, sign in and do forgotten password if they've forgotten their password. It is useful for you to be able to see what email address they registered with, because sometimes they forget. And I'll show you in a minute how you can do that. What you don't want is them to have two accounts because that'll get all a bit messy because you'll you will know which account you're looking at. So they'll fill in this form. It'll ask them for some personal details and a password. They'll put themselves in your school, make sure they know to do that and the year group they're in. And then they're in. So. Well, how can you see whether students are registered? So the way you can do that is, first of all, you could do it by student. So if you clicked on that, you're going to get a list of all the students who are in your school. Like mine is called the Planner Academy. So you could search for a student by surname, email, there's all these different categories and you could find an individual. But this is a big long list of all the students who are registered. You can sort them by year group or whatever. Um, so once you find your student, there's a few things you could do with that student just for me to show you. You can take certain actions against the students, which I'm showing you here on the right hand side. So this will pop up the student record. Um, so this is where you could look and see what email address they used last time. See if it's a, they got it right, because if you've written it wrong and it's not even a real email address, then obviously they won't be able to use forgotten password. So here, you can actually identify um, a category for the students if you need to. We've added a few more this year. We've always had additional needs, but we now have pupil premium and education, health and care plan. And if you do do that, then that's going to show up on the pathway plan of results. And what we would usually say is if they didn't want these categories, you might want to give them the, the longer level of guidance because they might have additional um, requirements. OK, so this links straight into the pathway planner then and that'll indicate on the pathway planner uh, reports, as you'll see in a minute. Now, a few other things you could do from here as well in the individual record for students is that you can, um, if they've left, so obviously your year 12 students, some might have gone to a local college or they've gone elsewhere to an apprenticeship. So you can go into their record and you can say they're no longer at my school. And if you know where they've gone, this little drop down, you can actually put them into that school or college. Um, but if if you don't know where they've gone, you could just say they've left. Another thing you can do from here, students can do forgotten passwords. So don't feel all the time you have to set them a new password. But if they really can't get in, then you could send a new password. So this is where it's always worth checking if they say I can't get in, I can't use this email address check their email address. Is it a good enough address? Because sometimes they've left off .com or whatever it might be. 
get that right and then you could send them a new password to that particular address. OK, another way you can see students, so that's where you get your whole list in the orange section are where we're managing all the users and groups. So I've just shown you students. But you can also look at groups and this will show you how many students are registered by the year groups, as you can see in my example here. So there's the year groups. They're always in a year group, but they could be in other groups as well. So I've got 68 students in year 12. And what I can do then is look and see which which students are in that group. There's a few other ways you can look at all students, which I'll show you as we go through. Students will be have just moved up a year group. So if they were year 11 last year on August 31st, they'd be moved up to year 12. If you've created any other groups, whether it's Pathway Planner or any groups like a year 7 tutor group last year, the name needs to be changed by you. The system is just a text box, so the system doesn't recognize when you put in 12 and made them 13 in your other groups. So you have to go in and all you do is click on the actions in the middle on the right hand side and that will pop up 12 NREPP and you could change it to 13 NREPP if, or change the tutor group if that's a different name. Oops. OK. So that's another good way to look and see, you know, if you're just about to do a session with your 11 and you planned this registration and you know you've got 160 kids in your 11 and there's only 140 showing, then you'll need to find out who those 20 are. Um, you can see their names here, but I'll show you another way to do it as well. OK, and a few reports that really help with finding out who's registered what their email is, and also whether you've given them access to the Pathway Plan. I find this quite useful. If you go in the turquoise section from the reporting zone, it's called Reports by Group. And then it'll show you all your groups, whether they're the year groups or anything you've set up. And there's particular actions you can take, particular reports you can see. I've just made that a bit bigger here. So. I'm going to show you the group members one in a minute because that's really useful. You could print that out, have it ready for your first sessions so you can give them to tutors so they can see exactly what email address the students use to register so they can help them get in. This is where you can see all the other reports from the four zones. So the job sectors students are choosing, providers, qualifications. So it's, this is not really the pathway planner. This is to do with the main part of career pilot. The other thing at the bottom, once you've done an advisor comment, um, you can actually see the last advisor comment in a report by that group. So if it's just a tutor group, uh, you could download that and share it with the tutors so they could see all your last advisor comments. But also you could do the same for action points you might have set with the students. So these can be useful ways of uh, your tutors understanding what the careers advisor has been doing um, so they could support their tutees. But I'm going to show you, this is the group members report. So this is useful, I find, because it's got all the students um, in that group. So this is a year 11 group, but it could be a tutor group. And it says their email address and it says whether you've given them access to the Pathway Planner. So if you run through that at a glance, you'll be able to see if anybody's not got access to the Pathway Planner. If you printed this out, downloaded it for the tutor on the day they do in the, the sort of option choice session pathway planner, this might be quite useful for them to have because they could see the email address the students use so they could kind of help them if they were stuck. They couldn't remember what they used. OK, I'll just take a pause there. Anybody want to put up hand and ask me a question? Um, I will keep an eye on chat actually as well. So. Right now, duplicate accounts, Rachel asked about, if they duplicate, you have to ask us to delete them. So you have to tell us which of their accounts you want to delete. The reason for that is that obviously the account is owned by the student, but we recognise if they've got more than one, you decide which is the one that you want. I mean, obviously, you'll tell them that's what you're doing. Um, and then you have to tell us through our helpline and then we will delete any duplicate accounts. I'll keep an eye on that, Rachel, I can see your type in. OK, yes, yeah, good to have a clear out this time of year. But you can see you've got the pathway is enabled and you can see their email address. This is quite useful as a, like an overview. So that's in reports by group and this is the group members. 
OK, now you can't add students, but you can add the administrators. In fact, you have to. Nobody else can do it. So in terms of like setting up your pathway planner group, you need your students in the system and you need your staff in the system as well. And they're called administrators. So it's very easy to set them up. You say new user and then you put in the first name, last name, email address of that staff member and you allocate them a role. Now there's three roles in Career Pilot. One is just to be a teacher, which could be like a tutor. So you could give them to your tutor access, but you have to attach them to the group you want them to look at, which I'll show you a bit later. If you haven't attached them to a group, they might have a login for the Career Pilot reporting zone, but they won't be able to see anything. You could give somebody the careers guidance advisor role as well. Um, and again, you have to attach them to the group that they have their role in. But the ultimate access is school admin. And I would suggest all of you, if you're involved in setting this up, should have school admin access. You can still be a careers guidance advisor for a group. I'll show you all that. But the school admin gives you a chance to see all students, all reports, set up staff and assign staff to, to groups. So it's quite important that you sort of keep that role so you can see and do everything. OK, so the way you kind of structure it then so you can assign the pathway planner to the staff and students is this way. I've got my students, got my staff set up. This is the way I do it. So we're going to go back to this section, the orange bit, which is all about users and groups, and we're going to set up our pathway planner groups. OK, so I've got my students in year groups, but I'm going to create a group now, which is going to call uh, refer to the pathway planner and these students and staff will be put in that group. So you say, click on new group, just gone onto another screen to show that. And then this comes up. So I'm going to call it something. I would always suggest you put PP behind whatever you call it, just to remind you because you might have other year nine groups that haven't got the pathway planner. So it'd just be a reminder. If they are a year 10, 11, 12 group, you can enable the pathway planner. If you haven't checked this box, um, the students in this group are not going to be able to see it. OK, so put that on. And this is where you're going to now attach the guidance advisor. So your option now is anybody you set up the guidance advisor um, level of access when you registered them or anybody who's a school admin. So if you're the school admin, you can choose yourself to be the guidance advisor for this particular group. Now, a guidance advisor is the only person who can set up bookings through the Pathway Planner. So if you want to be the one to set up pathway um, bookings, then you'll need to do that. Hi, Rachel, you've got a hand up. Do you want to put your mic on? Is that convenient for you? Or um, Yeah, I was just, it's probably a bit, a bit late now, but while you were doing the reports, I was trying to run a, run a report to, at the same time and it just wasn't doing anything. Uh, so okay. I, I've, I've, I'm into I'm into reports. I'm into devices school. Clicked on next, um, and then it's uh, I'm, I'm using a group. I'm choosing the report, and whatever I click on, nothing was happening. Nothing's happening. Uh, okay, so that might be. Have you seen those reports previously, or are they fell new? I've not tried that before. Never. Never, okay. Never In that report. case, you probably need to ask your IT department whether they block in pop-ups. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to show you how it should look, just so you know. OK, so let's, I'm going to get into a teacher login here. So there's my pathway planner, my results and bookings. I've got a few schools. So I wasn't called? in that bit, I was in reports. Ah, OK, so sorry. I, I, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, OK, so reports by in individual. That takes you down to a student. So hold on, let's do that. OK, so if I wanted to see an individual student, I could go here and see all their, their information. Yeah. But I can go to a group report and I, I've got... It's the, the individual ones seem to pop up. It's the, it's the group ones, nothing. Oh, seems to that's happen. interesting. Right, OK, so what you should see, and we've given you access to the Planner Academy, so you might be able to see it here, I don't know. So if you want to look at like your LEM groups, only got eight kids. I just click on choose report and it should pop up like that. 
Is that yeah. what you're not seeing? No, I'm seeing that. But when okay. I click on, for example, I don't know, group members. Just do else. one, try just doing one click. Sometimes people do double clicks and it gets, it goes in and out again. Just one click. I'm trying. Oh, provider choices has worked. So it must just be the, 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 um, click in. The, no, no, no. Just the first oh. one. Maybe that isn't, um, job group members. Nothing happens. Um, okay. Tasks completed. Nothing happens. Um, subject choices, nothing happens. So it's only. Okay. Well, Rich, I think probably we need to, um, if we book a little teams together, we can just, uh, you can share your screen and we can go through that. Is that right? That, that'll be a really good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Sue. Sorry to hijack. No, 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 it's no problem at all, but Thank you know, you. We, we could just run through that together and see if we could fathom out what it is. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you very much. Ta. Okay. Everybody else. Okay. Uh, just write in chat if you want to, or stick your hand up if you want to ask another question. Okay, just going to move on. Okay, so um, when I, let's go back a bit, sort of. Just so you have to choose a crazy guidance advisor for that group who's going to be able to make bookings, and also if the students actually request uh, e-guidance, for example, um, that's going to come to this person. So it's uh, important to have somebody in there. Um, and then you can assign your students. So you could filter by your group. So you could say, show me all your 11, and then you could choose the students you're going to allocate to this group. If it's a teacher group, it'll be like 28 or whatever. And then your teachers are going to be in the right hand side. So once your teachers are set up, you can choose them as well. So don't forget to save. But now what you've done is created your pathway planner group. The students can see the pathway planner and their career tools, and these teachers and the careers guidance advisor can do the things that they need to do. Okay. Okay, one top tip I would suggest is that you create one group which is all your 11 pathway planner. Now the reason for this is because even if the best will in the world you set up this registration session um, and you've got 160 kids you know inevitably somebody won't be there that day and you'll have to sort of deal with your stragglers. So the great thing about this is once you've got those stragglers um, registered if you set up one whole year group and again just attach yourself as the um, Chris guidance as the guidance advisor you can just keep saying filter by group select all so you can put your 11 select all if you just do that every few days at that period when kids are getting registered that means they're all getting access to the pathway planner and actually sometimes it can be useful to be you as the careers leader or careers guidance advisor to see the whole of the year group as well as them in tutor groups so uh, I think that's a useful thing to do but it wouldn't attach any teachers to it potentially. And that's fine, you don't have to attach teachers to it. And as always, for this bit, most things in CareerPal don't have to save, but you do have to save when you've created a group. Okay, so just a quick reminder, uh, you do need to get the students registered before you can get them into their pathway planner groups. Then you wanna get your staff set up, think about how you're gonna structure your groups, and then you put it all together. So set up a new group, add the students, uh, enable the pathway planner, add the guidance advisor, add the teachers, save, and then it's done. Any questions on that? Okay, I will carry on, but I'll keep an eye on hands and chat. Rachel, your hands up, but I don't know if that's a historical hand. Might be, yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to remind you now how it looks for students when they do it. So you did this when you came on the training, but it was some time ago. So let's just run through quickly. So as I said, we've got our structured presentations for the students. Part of those presentations for this option choice session. There's a separate little session for getting them registered. If you want access to that, that's on, on the advisor zone. But in the session, for early on in the session, we'll be showing a three minute animated video that explains why careers are so important and what they can be doing to take those forward. Know yourself, your values, your interests, your skills, do stuff to build your CV and your skills, know all your options 
and then use all your supporters. And then in this presentation, we're kind of showing them how they do that through Career Pilot. All our presentations have been reviewed and they're available as video lessons. The only thing I haven't done on those is add the CDI framework, which I will come to when I get a chance. Okay, so they're going to then have some exploring time on career paths, all in the structured presentation, tells them what to do, about 30 minutes to look at the things they're interested in. But then the last 10 minutes, they're going to do the pathway planner. So you've set it all up, so it's available now for the students. And the way we usually explain it, we don't say you're going to get three levels of guidance. We usually say, we want to know what you're interested in. We just spent more or less the last hour talking about your options. So we're interested to know what ones you, you're thinking about. You can change them at any time. And we're going to ask you some questions to find out how we can help you to, so we know that you're ready for your pathway. OK, I think we made the point that <laughs> if you haven't set up the group, they won't be able to see it. OK, so these are the pathways for post-16 students. So that's showing them post-18 choices. So they're going to say, well, they're definite considering not doing. We have put a new pathway in this year because some schools fed back through our user group that um, some of their students were going on to college after sixth form um, rather than to university level study or the other pathways. And, you know, there are quite a lot of BTEC and MBQ options, which might be level three and four. So we've put that in as a pathway the students can, you know, might might identify um, as something they're already thinking about. So if they're definite or considering, they do a quiz, and the quiz is asking them this student's interested in university level study, which they're considering. So they're not definite, but they're considering. So we now find out a bit more about what they know already or what they've done, and they say yes, think so, no. Some of these are red flag things. They don't see all the scoring. But what they get is their red, amber, green score. So this student is considering university with their amber, same with vocational, and they're also considering apprenticeships and they're red. So there's obviously quite a few things they don't know there. Now, when we decide what sort of level of guidance they got, we suggest you start with a definite pathway. Now, this student hasn't got a definite pathway um, and they're considering three things. They're clearly not really informed or done much about, you know, done all they need so they probably need the middle level of guidance but if they have additional need i'll probably give them the longer level of guidance so that's the way we can do it so everybody's going to get guidance which is obviously gets be eight now in our pilot this is what we had for the different levels if they were green they got a 20 minute check of their plan always with the option to come back for drop in if that wasn't enough 30 minutes for amber 60 minutes for red or additional needs now you know, in your school, you might have to flex that a little bit because it depends what you're able to offer. There's also the timeline they can see, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, after the first guidance, you know, a few weeks later, they might be in crisis about their choices. Um, but so they can, you can explain how they can request guidance themselves. And that would come to that guidance advisor for that group. And you could offer them a drop in. They can also ask an e-question through the system too. And again, that will go to the guidance advisor. You obviously need to tell them that these functions are there if this is going to be a thing in your school. OK, so the timeline, um, you, we have shown you this before, but what that shows on a particular date where the students were in terms of the pathway planner. So these students have done, this student's done it, there were two reds and amber. As a result of that data, they've been given a, a long guidance session, which took place on the 24th of February. At the end of the guidance, you always get them to edit their responses because you want to see the impact of your intervention. And now the student has done that and they are now showing as green and amber. So it's all about showing, you know, helping the students get to the point where they are green um, or maybe amber by the time they get their results so they can know exactly what they're doing. Everybody happy? OK. OK, um, we've got different versions, but you're all school people tonight, so I'll just go through that. So what I'm going to go on to do now is show you how you can access all the reports and the data that's been created by the students keeping the, uh, completing the pathway planner. So this is the juicy bit, really. OK, so in the reporting zone, uh, you obviously need to have access to reporting zone. I think you've all probably got access. If you happen to have to complete a date share agreement, but then you've got access to the back end. and um, just 
just to show you too, once you've got that login for the reporting zone and any other staff member has got a login, they can go straight to the student site and have a play with all the career tools, not the pathway plan because that's like an add on doesn't work, but all the other bits like the skills map, whatever you could have a go at. Um, you can also see all the resources in our advisor zone as well. Some are protected, but if you've got a password, you can see everything. But we're going to look now at the pink section, which is the Pathway Planner results and bookings. OK. Right, this is um, so the way where that's going to be is in um, the pink section results and bookings. Um, we have added another school on view today so you can play and not affect any of your live data. But if you've got data in your live site, you might want to have a little look at that. Um, so we're looking at Pathway Planner today is where you can play with some of the results we've got okay rather than using your live site so results and bookings if you click on there you'll see any groups that you've set up as pathway planner groups so here they are so this is not the year groups will be above it but these are the groups you've set up and they're in the pathway planner now if you've got no groups here that means that nobody has got set up so it's worth checking that okay i think i made a point there um, but everything to do with the Pathway Planner results, you can access from the right hand side. Actions, Rob is on the right. So there's three things you could do. You can see the results and actions, manage bookings or look at the progression follow up report. So we're going to look at the top one, the Pathway Planner results and actions. So you could look at that for any group you've set up. OK, and if they've done the Pathway Planner, it's going to look a bit like this. So if your 11 had done it, it would have been at the 11. Um, one thing you can also remember, if you remember when we look at the student record, you could add in whether the student had an additional need. So in this case, here we are, have it tagged as a blue additional needs, but there are three other, there are three categories you can choose. When, but you have to go into the individual student to give them this status. But that means when you look at this dashboard at a glance, you can see who maybe needs additional support because of their additional needs, as well as what they might need in terms of their pathway support. OK, so in this report, you can see your 11 if they've done it. These students have just done it post 16. You can see where they last updated it. So you might have set up this option choice session where they complete the pathway plan on a particular date, but they might have got in and edited their responses. Sometimes students feel inspired to go and find the answer to something they had to say no to. So they might have looked at career pilot, then edited their response. So you can always see the last time they actually did anything on their pathway planner. There are certain actions you can then take against the individual. Um, once you've set up a booking, a guidance session, it'll appear here. So if it's green, it's coming up. If it's red, you've kind of done it. So I'll just show you some of that. Now, when we decide who's going to get what guidance, we've in the pilot, we've always started with definite. So if they've got definite pathway, that's the one that kind of determines the level of guidance. But you know, you might use other information as well, like their grades. So if they want to go to university and they're green, but you know their grades are not going to get them there, you might want to give them longer guidance because you know there's an issue. So you don't just use the pathway planner. This is a great way to get started. So this student is the top one. They have two pathways they're considering. They are green for university level study. They're considering it, um, but employment they're also considering. So I think I might give them the longer guidance because they haven't got a definite pathway. So I might give them 30 minutes, our amber guidance. Now the next one now it down is tagged as additional needs, so they should get the longer guidance anyway. But they all also are considering multiple pathways and then amber and red. So I think I would give them the longer guidance. The next way one down now we in our pilot if they were definite for it and they were red they automatically got the longest level of guidance because um you know they they definitely about something they don't even know all the things they need to know about so and especially if it's apprenticeships because that is even you know that's quite a complicated pathway the next one down they are definite about gap year and amber definite about employment they're green which is kind of good in one way, but I would want to check that out, especially 
with the you know employment market as it is. So I think I would give them a kind of middle level of guidance just to check all those kind of little bits of anomalies out. So the one at the bottom is a bit more straightforward because they're definite by university and they show in green. So I would give them a check of the plan for 20 minutes. And then obviously I've got my drop in if I feel they need a bit more time. I'll just show you some of the actions and I'll pause so you can ask questions. So against, sorry, let's go back. Against every student in the action, which is on the right, there are these options. One, you could view their answers. So this can be useful. One school in the pilot started looking at the answers and finding out what the common uh, issues were. And then they started running group works in lunchtime to overcome some of those issues. Like, you know, if 10 students would say they didn't understand about finance for HE, you could see who they were and actually get them along and give them that information. You could view their timeline, you could book guidance. You can see what's called the progression follow up. It's like a little one liner. The advisor writes as they kind of leave your room, if you like. So they might come in with all sorts of ideas, but you know they might be going out with more of a definite plan and you can actually record that. You could share that with tutors, for example. The tutor follow up can happen from here and those advisor comments, the longer comments, not just the one liner um, that get added to the main report. You can see anybody else's previous comments, but you can write your own little reports from here as well. So let's just show you book guide. I'll show you these things quickly. Um, Rachel's typing, so I'll just take a pause and see what Rachel was. Uh, got to go. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Rachel, I've recorded this, so we'll send you a, a link to the recording as well. OK, so booking guidance is really easy. You can put in whatever you call it in your school, in your careers guidance, careers session uh, with Miss Lewis, whatever it might be, room 301. Um, put the date, the time, and then what sort of guidance you're offering. So you could put anything in. If they drop in, you could record it here as well, the date they dropped in and um, that it was dropping guidance. So you say long, medium, check in, drop in, self or tutor referral, e-guidance and parental referral as well. Okay. Uh, and that's all of those will show on the timeline if you've actually put them in. When you've got lots of bookings, you can go to the third. You know, I said in group reports and actions, there were three things you could do. We've looked at the reports, um, results and actions. Now manage bookings. So this is where you can see all your bookings. Imagine you have the whole load in there and you can sort them using little arrows. You can sort them by date, order, types of guidance, alphabetically by students. And the other nice thing you could do is you could put in did not attend. So you might set all this up and then students doesn't come and that will show on their timeline, just like all the other types of guidance. You could download this. So if you had an external careers advisor coming in and you were setting all this up, then you could download and filter and give them their sort of caseload for that day, for example. I'm going to show you a few of the other actions you could take against the students in the Pathway Planner. One is the progression follow up. This is like done by the advisor at the end of guidance. So you could say you know, something like university level study. Yeah, they definitely about that. These are the subjects they're interested in doing. And there's a little drop down where you can choose whether they are um, firm, borderline or likely to get their grades. So that's quite useful too, really. And you can add on more than one pathway um, if uh, if they they're thinking about two things. Um, sorry, just having. Uh, yeah, sorry, my, my, um, we're having a child pickup issue going on, so let me just deal with that very quickly. <laughs> all right, all done. Um, okay, so uh, just show you then the the. Oh, yeah, so this is where you can see the advisor comments as well. So you can actually add in actions. If you just click on advisor comments, you see anything that's written, written about the student before. You can see their full report and you can add actions and your report from there. And when you're in there, if you want to get back, you just click on the pathway planner and you can get back to the bit of the pathway planner you want to 
look at. So you can go between the pathway planner and the main part of career pilot and see the reports. Okay, so that's useful, just get used to doing that. Okay, just to say, when you have got in to write a report, just a reminder that you can write actions, they're really easy to do, I'm not going to show you that. But when you are writing your report, you can add hyperlinks to anything in career pilot, but also, which is called an internal link, or anything outside career pilot. So in this example, explore the career pilot animal job sector, this is an internal link, which is there. So I highlight where I want my link to be, add the link. This, this is the contents of career pilot. So if it's blue, it means you could drill down a bit further. So that's all our information about all the pathways and money and those sort of things. Job sectors will show all the jobs. And once you've got the section you want to attach to this, you can just click on the link and then that'll be in there. And you can also attach, uh, attach external links. Like if you want to say, go to an open day, Dexter University, you can get that link and put that in. It just means your reports are much more useful to the kids. They've got all these links to useful things and you don't have to make them so long as well, we find. Everybody okay? Right, just moving on a bit then. Ooh. Oh yeah, just to say too, in terms of accessing all those reports, um, you can also do that through the individual reports. So if you want to add actions and comments, you can either do it straight from the pathway planner, but you can also do it from reports by individual. And if you're doing that, you'd find the student and then show you all the reports and you could view all uh, the report and add your comments or reports that way as well. So it's kind of two ways into it. So the tutors, they follow up just here so they do need to have a login so they can do that um, and then they just say yes I've done it and yes or no that student needs a referral okay um, once the tutor once you've done these one-liners or once the tutors have started to do their follow-up all that can be accessed through the progression follow -up report so that's the third thing you can do in this group reports and action area so now I've got my one liner for all the students. I've got, um, I could see whether the tutors have done their follow up and I could see who they'd like me to see again through a drop down. Um, you could download this, you could share it with the tutors, you could share it with senior managers. You know, it's it's great, easy way to get this top line information out to multiple people in your school. Any questions? Um, I'm just to say when from these tutors, when they're doing their tutor follow up, um, they can get to see all the other reports on that student as well. So from the top, they can actually look at anything to do with the pathway planner. And I've just shown you. So, so there's multiple ways, whether you're in as a tutor or you're writing that progression follow up report, where you can get to the other parts of the system as well. So you can always get from the main career site. Um, from the pathway planner to the main career site and back again to the pathway planner. Okay, so there's the full report, advice and actions where you'd write your report. And if you wanted to get back to the pathway plan, you just click on that and then you could go back into whichever bit you wanted to look at. Okay, here's a demonstration of what the full report looks like. And you could add multiple reports. You could even, if tutors were keen, they could write a little report there if they wanted to or anybody else. So this is the full student uh, record from Career Pilot, really. OK, so just a reminder that, you know, you look at your results, you'll be booking your guidance, um, you'll, the guidance will take place. You can record your report and your actions on Career Pilot. Um, do tell the student to edit their pathway planner responses. So they have to go into their own site, edit the um, answers, because hopefully the things they were saying no to, they now think, think so or yes. OK, so it's important to remember to do that. Otherwise, it won't be on their timeline, how your intervention has helped them move on. And this is the one liner report we talked about. Um, as well can be recorded and obviously you're going to get your tutors to follow up. It doesn't have to be tutors, could be whoever else you think is a good person to ask these three questions. 
but tutors are great because you know they then learn a lot by their tutees and that was the feedback we got from our pilot actually okay just a few things then um this is where the students would go in and edit their responses they need to sign into career pilot then against the pathways they were choosing um when they first did the pathway planner they can view edit their answers so that update then will appear on their timeline okay so there's where we get into that second day they're showing their different times of using the pathway planner okay so I've run you through quite a bit. I feel like giving you a lot of information. I know it's a reminder. Um, what you might want to do now is actually um, use your email address, get into the reporting zone. I think you've all got access. Um, and what you could do is have a little play with some of the things I've sh shown you. Because you're going to have a play, you might not want to use your live site, although you could have a look and see what's in there. Um, you want to use the Planner Academy. So I've set you up with that as well as your own school today. So what you can do when you want to click on report, it'll ask you which school you want to look at. So you just put in Planner Academy and then you can look at everything in the Planner Academy and you won't affect any live data. In the Planner Academy, in the report zone, you could go to the orange section and go to a group and set up a pathway planner group add yourself as a careers guidance advisor you'll be showing there because i've given you you've got school admin access you could click on the pathway plan results for a group carry out any of the actions for a student you can add an advisor comment try adding an internal link maybe you could download a report and save as excel so it'll, it'll, when it downloads it's a csv file um, but it gives you the option to save it as an excel file and then it's a bit more flexible for the likes of us the C csv file is very good for if you're technically into um, those sort of level of reports but i would normally use i would use excel anybody want to ask a question um we've got like about 15 minutes left so maybe if you have a play if you want me to show you anything if you have to leave that's absolutely fine as well <laughs> Um, Sue's saying she's going to have to put an afternoon aside. Uh, yeah. Not actually record her report as she does this in another format. Well, one thing you might want to get her to do, Sue, is just do that one liner, you know, because the one liner won't take very long to do and could be really useful as a summary. It's up to you, obviously, you'll know how what works best in your context, context. But you know, the one liner we find is quite useful. But you know, it's up to you completely. Um, but um, yeah, that's fine, Steve. You leave. Um, and, you know, if you need anything, you won't know to get back to me or the helpline. Um, just to say quickly the resources so I can show you where everything is, just to remind you. Um, when you get to, the, there's a few ways to get there. One way, if you are in the reporting zone, um, you can go straight into the students area, as I said, or the advisor zone. And you will see everything in the advisor zone because your login gives you access to all that. Just to remind you, when you're in the student area, if you want to get back to the admin area, you just click on admin and your name and you're back in. So you could toggle between both sites. Now the advisor zone, you can also access straight from the top bar. You can see it there and I'm pointing to you. You need to be logged in if you're going to get access to everything in the advisor zone because we've protected some stuff now. But when you get there, it looks like this. The first tile is all about the pathway planner and then all our other resources there as well. In the pathway planner, it looks like this. All the student resources are in the student area. The user guide for the tutor training recording of that, that session, you could just send off to tutors. It takes about 20 minutes for them to look at it, um, is in the tutor training. And the user guides is where we've got little videos of all the different aspects of the process that I've just shown you tonight. The little poster, if you want to flag up your services to students, don't have to use ours, but it's there. And the implementation plan is there as well. There's also a little video of how to get registered, which you can show to students too. Okay, so there we are, some examples. Um, the other things, the five week PSHE programs are there. We've got a new set of hot jobs to do with the NHS. And these have got little activities about some of those jobs. Good for Key Stage 3 and 4, so they learn 
more detail about particular jobs. Uh, we've got um, lots of maps to show how career pilot links with Gatsby. This is a new one we did recently, which shows how you can embed career pilot to meet Gatsby at a strategic level. Uh, we've got these we put together last year when we knew careers was getting squeezed. There wasn't much time to do it. So the suggestion of two 20 minute sessions for every year group. So at least they got something last year and you might find those useful this year as well. So that's uh, Steve's got to go. That's fine. Um, so and Sue's had to go as well. Um, so I think, oh, Sue, you're still with us, I think. Sally's had to go. <laughs> uh, OK, but just get back to me if there's anything you need or get in touch with the helpline. Alice, I don't know if you want to just stay on and we'll have a quick chat. You all right, Sue? I think I'll just stop the recording now.